Money. It's a gas. So grab that cash with both hands and make a stash. If you want your credit score to go down, it's a machine that you've never seen. It runs every day. It watches you and it scores you. It doesn't care if you're a good person or you had a bad month. It doesn't care if you got sick or laid off or your Jack's wife took the kids. It only cares about one thing. How likely are you to keep generating interest, fees, and predictable, reliable cash flow? Today, we're talking about credit scores. I'm King Trout, and today I'm dressed like that teacher you had in high school whose name you can only remember if you really think about it. Modern credit scoring is based on what is called predictive risk modeling. Every borrower is placed into a probability distribution. You're not judged as you, you're judged by the people who look most like you. These models ask, how often do people with this income default? In this zip code, with this job volatility, with this payment pattern, you're not judged on your behavior, you're judged on the behavior of people in your cohort. So if they tend to screw up more often, uh, you get punished, even if you literally never have. There's nothing fair about it. It's just a number that's been crunched by an algorithm calculated based off of people who you have a couple things in common with. Where did it come from? Credit scores weren't created by the government or an economist or lawmakers. No, they were created by two guys in a San Francisco apartment who wanted to automate lending so that banks no longer had to talk to filthy poor people. Ew! Their names were Bill Fair and Earl Isaac. And I know what some of you are thinking right now, and shockingly, no, neither of them. In 1956, Fair was a mathematician who worked on early data processing systems, and Isaac was an engineer who understood how to turn messy, abstract human behaviors into easily calculable numbers. They got together and created the Fair and Isaac Company. F-I-C-O. FICO. FICO. Their pitch was simple. Give us your loan data and we'll calculate which humans are more safe to loan money to. This was, at the time, revolutionary because prior to, lending was essentially vibes-based with a little dusting of old-timey racism. Local bankers would decide who they deemed to be trustworthy, stable, and, you know, one of us. There were some consequences of this, unfortunately. Those consequences being, uh, women weren't allowed to borrow money without their husbands. Um, oftentimes, black families were redlined. Uh, immigrants were considered to be too risky. And sometimes they just flat out wouldn't loan money to poor people. This is a rich white man's word. Fair and Isaac thought that math could make this objective. The problem was that they trained their models off of this biased information. So, for example, when you're calculating a credit score, for a woman or a black person who's never had a loan before because they were discriminated against um, on paper, the math shows that they're not worthy to receive a loan because they've never paid one back. So, see how that kind of perpetuates the problem? All the discrimination stayed. The only change was that instead of, you know, being discriminated against because of your gender or the color of your skin by a loan officer, you were being discriminated against by a mathematical equation. For almost 20 years, banks didn't even want anything to do with credit scores. Why? Because human judgment is powerful. A banker could say yes to a friend, no to an enemy, yes to a donor, and no to a poor family. Credit scores threaten bankers' powers. They're aside from the issues aforementioned, much more neutral. So the judgment of a mathematical equation up against the personal judgment of a banker, it's more neutral. You know what I mean. So FICO sat on the sidelines, quietly waiting. Until the 70s. In the 1970s, something terrifying happened to the banks. The government passed the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, the Fair Housing Act, and other anti-discrimination loan laws. Anti lo laws about et not discriminating when it comes to loans. Banks could no longer openly deny loans on the basis of race, sex, religion, or marital status. That terrified them because it meant that the potential existed for them to be sued. FICO was no longer the enemy. FICO was a shield. Because if a lawsuit came, the bank could go, nuh-uh, we didn't deny that guy a loan because he's black. We denied him a loan because the magic number told us not to. 
and that magic number can't be cross-examined in court. In the 1980s, three companies emerged as the keepers of America's financial memory. Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. They bought, merged, and absorbed dozens of regional credit bureaus into nationwide databases. The credit bureaus don't just track loans. They track phone bills, utility payments, uh, your rental history, your employment changes, anytime you've moved addresses. Then they turn around and they sell this data to insurers, to employers, to advertisers, to landlords. Your data becomes a product. You are not the customer. You're the inventory. If only there was something you could do about that. You know what's infuriating? These data brokers are selling everything about us. What we buy, who we talk to, what we Google, all without ever telling us. They're selling our private info? To who? To anyone! Scammers, spammers, stalkers. They don't care. These companies make billions off of us. And meanwhile, the government does nothing. Your info is probably floating around on some shady forum somewhere as we speak. That's actually terrifying. And it should be. Your privacy is just a line item on some executive's quarterly earnings report. You ever felt creeped out by an ad that knew a little bit too much about you? This is why. They're laughing all the way to the bank and probably greasing up some politicians so it stays legal in the meantime. So what the hell do we do about it? <laughs> Funny you should ask. I personally started using Aura, who's sponsoring this video. They track down the data brokers exposing your info and automatically send opt-out requests. No paperwork, no forms. They do all that for you? Well, as a matter of fact, they do. They also monitor the dark web, alert you to credit fraud attempts, provide you with a VPN, a password manager, and up to $5 million in ID theft insurance. Hmm. Well, good news. You can try it for free for 14 days at Aura.com slash King Trout. That's just enough time for them to start ripping your info off those sketchy websites. I'm in. I'm a real human being. <laughs> Indeed, King Trout playing Ryan Gosling's character from the film Drive. Thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. Back to it. Millions of Americans were now in digital files. And in 1989... 1989, less than 40 years ago, everybody thinks credit scores have been around for eternity. Nope. No, like, your grandpa was born before credit scores existed. Anyway, in 1989, FICO convinced these three companies to standardize the score that they evaluated you with. Not because it was the best or made the most sense, but because it was the easiest to scale. And bing, bang, boom, overnight, a private company's imaginary made-up number became the gatekeeper to determine whether or not you can get a mortgage, or a car, or an apartment, or some jobs. There was no vote held, no law was enacted, there was no public debate. Just spreadsheets. Credit scores didn't rise to prominence because they're fair, they rose to prominence because they made it easier and more streamlined for banks, insurers, corporations, and landlords to streamline the process by which they approve or deny you. They turned financial life into something that could be automated, controlled, and monetized. Your FICO score uses five major weighted categories. Your payment history, your credit utilization, the length of your credit history, your credit mix, and your new credit. But inside those categories are hundreds of sub-variables. Time since your last missed payment, size of that last missed payment, your balance relative to your limit, um, the velocity at which you spend money and hundreds of other variables. Also, the model doesn't care if you've paid your rent on time every month for the past 20 years. If your landlord wasn't reporting it to the bureau, it never happened. The thing that most people don't seem to understand is that these credit scoring systems do not want zero debt. They want active, predictable, interest-generating debt. If you pay off all your cards, your utilization goes to zero, your activity drops, and your profit profile disappears, which, to the model, that looks like risk. Because inactive debtors don't make them money. <laughs> You're rewarded for being in debt responsibly. And that is why people like me, who do not maintain debt, and buy nearly everything with 
cash that I actually have. That's right, I don't have a credit card. I never have. People like us have credit scores. Live in the pod, eat the bugs, stay in forever debt. Credit models aren't simple formulas. They use logistic regression, survival analysis, machine learning models, and cohort behavior tracking. They're working off the history of millions of borrowers. What do all of those fancy words that I just said mean? Basically, in summary, your credit score isn't necessarily determined by your behavior. A lot of it is determined by the behavior of people who they have decided, these agencies, have decided are mathematically similar to you. And that's why it can get pretty funny. You and someone else can do the exact same thing, and one of your credit scores goes up, and the other goes down. Why? Well, because you're in different cohorts. Your risk groups are different, your statistical twins behave differently, and the system isn't tracking what you did, it's tracking what people statistically similar to you are likely to do next. The credit scoring models are also proprietary. This means you can't audit them, you can't really know what's actually taking place behind the scenes. There's no meaningful way to challenge any errors, and you can't prove discrimination. You're judged by a system that you're not allowed to understand. Slave to the financial algorithm. Credit scores were never about helping people. They're about scaling debt, reducing lender risk, automating social sorting, and turning your financial life into a data pipeline. Your future is decided by a probability curve. Not because you're bad, but because an equation decided that somebody like you once was. Stay in debt forever and consume, consume, consume. It's good for the economy. As always, I've been King Trout. I'll see you when I see you. Love you. Bye.